the Americans have officially changed their zones. So in polite fashion, Canadians are now reviewing their zones. And it's very likely that your zone in Canada will change. Before we start, I want you to comment what zone you're from down below. This channel is a collaborative channel. It's a science-based gardening technique but collaborative. And the best way for us to collaborate and get information to each other is if you comment down below what zone you're in. If we're being truthful, you guys are the all stars of the channel, more so than me, just saying. So if you guys know, I always talk about zones and I talk about how zones really truly don't matter as a gardener, unless of course you're purchasing perennials. Cause ultimately your first and your last frost dates are not in zone dependent and they're more dependent on where exactly you are. They also don't factor in microclimates. So a front south facing yard versus a backyard that is Northern facing or potentially has sheds and trees and homes or fences blocking out light. All these things can factor into zone. But did you know that a Canadian zone and a USDA zone do not necessarily translate? And the reason for that is because an American zoning or the USDA zones for plants or plant hardiness actually is reliant on only one factor. What we call this is a single variable map meaning it only relies on one extreme, which is essentially a temperature factor, meaning the lowest potential temp that could happen in that area of the US you may be located. And because of this, there's no translation to the Canadian version, which actually factors in seven different things. And we'll talk about what those seven factors are here in a little bit and why they matter to you as a gardener or someone who is producing and growing food. The Canadian government has put together a single variable map that actually mirrors the Americans um, that you can utilize to determine what American zone you are in. Because the Canadian map factors in seven different factors, we actually tend to see that the changes are minute or lower in nature. The USDA map revision actually shows a lot of zones or many zones going up one to half a zone. So the Canadian version, we don't tend to see that as much. And it's because of its reliance on so many different factors that make the determination. So I'm gonna read these off the Agriculture Agri-Foods Canada website. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that what makes up the map every 10 years is actually the last 30 years of data. So if you've noticed that things are out of whack in the last five years, it's unlikely to skew the data that much because we're using a 30 year total to determine this. But here are the seven factors that we take over 30 years to determine if you're going up or down as The factors that Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada use to determine the zone or the plant hardiness zone of your area is your minimum winter temperatures, your length of your frost-free period, summer rainfall, maximum temperatures, snow cover, January rainfall, and minimum wind speeds. So should we be shocked by the change of the map? Does this mean climate change is gonna ruin our gardens? No, that's not the case. This review is very normal and we haven't done it in many, many years. So we are due for this review to happen. Now there's no rush to make this happen and they are guesstimating sometime in 2024. They don't have a set date for the Canadian map. So there's no guarantee. Regardless of where you are, if you're in the US or you are in Canada, the actual zone you're in does not determine much other than your perennials. Meaning when you go to the store to buy a perennial, you're looking for the zone that those perennials apply to and then purchasing for that area. That is only time it matters. Your annuals, your vegetable crops can be grown in any condition. So long as you have the days to harvest, that's one little disclaimer there. So if you have a plant that has 120 days to harvest and you know your growing season is only 109, there's a high likelihood that you're not going to get harvest from that plant because it needs 120 outdoor days. So that me, check it off the list is something that you cannot grow. If you have an annual that fits in your frost-free day count, you are just fine. Ultimately speaking, the Canadian change probably isn't gonna harm you. Uh, the USDA change probably isn't gonna matter to many of you. But it is good data for those of us that are a little bit nerdy and we wanna know what factors are changing and why and how to navigate the world around us. Anyways, I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below what zone you're in.